From new insights into how the Spinosaurus hunted underwater to why human speech would sound garbled on Mars. These are some of the stories that we talk about on this episode of Scientifix. I am Mohana Basu and every week on The Prince Scientifix, I take you through some of the top science stories of the week from across the globe. Machu Picchu, an Inca archaeological site that attracts hundreds of thousands of tourists every year, may have been known by the wrong name since its rediscovery. According to archaeologists, the UNESCO World Heritage Site was actually known as Huayna Pichu, the name of a peak overlooking the ruins, or simply Pichu. The team from Peru's Ministry of Culture and the University of Illinois, Chicago, said that analyzing 19th century maps, information in 17th century documents, and the original field notes of the US explorer Hiram Bingham, revealed that not one of the sources refers to the site as Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu was rediscovered by Bingham in 1911. At the time, the ruins were very little known. The researchers found that the ruins of an Inca town called Huayna Picchu are mentioned in a 1904 atlas that was published seven years before Bingham arrived in Peru. While male bottlenose dolphins are known to use physical contacts such as gentle petting to connect with their closest friends, a new study this week reveals that they also maintain their friendships with some of their acquaintances using whistles. The researchers at the University of Bristol show that vocal exchanges, which take less time, are used by dolphins to remain connected with their weaker allies. The scientists used nine years of acoustic and behavioral data from a dolphin population in Shark Bay in Western Australia to assess how male dolphins reinforced and maintained their valuable alliances. Many animals use touch to strengthen and reaffirm important relationships. But as the number of social relationships increases, the demands on the time and space to maintain such relationship also increases. The research team was able to identify the different ways that these males bonded with each other. Vocalizations and language evolved as a form of vocal grooming to replace physical grooming as increasingly large group sizes placed impossible demands on the time available for physical contact behaviors. Also this week, analyzing the sounds captured by the Perseverance rover has helped determine the speed of sound on Mars, which reveals that human speech would sound garbled on the red planet. The Perseverance rover, which landed on Mars over a year ago, is outfitted with a microphone, which allowed the rover to beam back the first sounds ever heard from another planet. Researchers calculated the speed of sound by measuring the amount of time it took for sounds from laser blast from Perseverance to return to the rover's microphone. The team found sound to be travelling on Mars at approximately 240 meters per second. Moreover, different frequencies of sound travel at different speeds on Mars. The speed increases by approximately 10 meters per second above 400 hertz. This finding suggests that communication would be extremely difficult on Mars with different parts of speech arriving listeners at different times, making conversations sound garbled. Also this week, scientists have reported creating a new variety of transgenic lettuce that produces bone-generating hormone, an advance that can help astronauts grow food aboard the International Space Station that would help guard against bone loss. NASA is preparing to send humans to Mars by the 2030s. However, spending a long period of time in microgravity will cause astronauts to lose bone mass. The new variety of lettuce could be grown in space to help guard against bone loss simply by eating a big bowl of salad. In addition, the lettuce may also help stave off osteoporosis in resource-limited areas here on Earth. Astronauts can carry transgenic seeds, which are very tiny, and grow them just like regular lettuce. Meanwhile, researchers have found that the Spinosaurus had dense bones that allowed the dinosaur to hunt underwater. Spinosaurus is the biggest carnivorous dinosaur ever discovered, even bigger than T-Rex, but the way it hunted had been a subject of debate for decades. Based on its skeleton, some scientists have proposed that Spinosaurus could swim, but others believe that it waded in the water. 
paleontologists from the universities of Cambridge and Oxford and the Field Museum in Chicago examined the density of their bones and compared them to animals like penguins, hippos and alligators. The team found that Spinosaurus and its close relative Baryonyx had dense bones that likely would have allowed them to submerge themselves underwater to hunt. Meanwhile, another related dinosaur called Sucomimus had lighter bones that would have made swimming more difficult, so it likely waded instead or spent more time on land like other dinosaurs. The researchers put together a data set of femur and rib bone cross sections from 250 species of extinct and living animals from seals, whales, elephants, mice and hummingbirds to dinosaurs of different sizes to extinct marine reptiles like mosasaurs and plesiosaurs. They compared these cross sections to bones from Spinosaurus and its relatives Baryonyx and Sycomimus. The team had to show a proof of concept among present-day animals that we know for sure are aquatic or not and then apply it to extinct animals that we can't observe. The study revealed a clear link between bone density and aquatic foraging behavior. Animals that submerge themselves underwater to find food have bones that are almost completely solid throughout, whereas cross sections of land dwellers' bones look more like donuts with hollow centers. This is Mohana Basu, special correspondent at The Print. If you like our work, do consider paying for a subscription to The Print. You can do so through the link in the description box below.